Okay folks, this is an interesting house. It's got a very checkered history and it's a very good example of what happens when you muck around with modern materials. But what you're seeing is actually not necessarily modern material. This is a total pastiche of materials that were stuck in around about the 1930s. Uh, and a lot of them are modern materials um, and you can now see the deterioration in them as a result um, but it's also complete bastardization if you like of a an old building what you're looking at now in the middle of the picture is actually where there was we think probably a, a, a 17th century early 17th century um, timber frame and I think you can see from the, the way that the, the stonework has been changed. If you look at um, the original manor house part, the original hall in here, and then you'll see there's a chimney section and you can see a, a slab of stonework that's been infilled, probably where the original chimney was, was, was just stepped in up the wall and they filled it with stonework to make this bit work uh, and then you'll find there's a, a bit there that's been taken out and refilled and a bit there that's been refilled um, and you've got this lovely sill beam which this is a 1930s pastiche of timber as are these windows uh, bogged up with cement there with these lovely 1930s cement infill panels uh, and we're not quite sure when the, the brickwork here was done. Um, probably about the same time. There's a bit of movement in the frame upstairs. There's not a lot of the original left. Uh, the windows are not original. These were put in, I think, again, 1930s. If we wander around, <coughs> you'll start to see it's actually quite a spectacular place. It's, you've got part of the original timber frame there, which that gable I think is relatively original. There's sections of original timber. And you can see the, they're not in terrible condition. And the reason they're not in terrible condition is because they're not painted. Uh, and the brickwork is actually done using lime. There are some repairs, if you look at that little section there, you can see there is cement. Uh, and we will be taking that out and sorting it out. That's, that's, that's about the only stuff that we need to do there. Wherever there's cement, we'll remove it. I'm not happy about the, um, the brickwork, but <clears throat> that'll be a conversation we have with the conservation guys. Um, <clears throat> One thing that's interesting though, you've got this, this house, all right, lovely old historic house. Uh, just have a look at what modern conservation are allowing within the curtilage, within the setting of this historic house. And we've got, this is Oxford conservation for you. Just have a look at what is being done to the historic setting of this building. And this beautiful old ancient pond there, which was a spring-fed pond, and all this bloody housing development that's going on around it. They sold off some of the land. Um, let's just come back to the building. There are bits of original. Uh, you can see the roof there has um, dropped in quite a bit. It's got a hell of a dip in it, but it's actually okay. It's held, it's fine, it's not got a problem. This is some of the original. Uh, not a lot left of it, but 17th century mouldings. And these mouldings come around. You can see the mouldings on this side. They're fine, there's nothing wrong with them, original. And then we see a repair and somebody jammed in a piece of timber underneath, that's not original. If you look at the top of the moulding, 
you'll see a knit one, pearl one, um, and we've got a, a hole there where there was a, 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 you can just see the, a little squared off profile for a bar. Here was a mullion. Bar, mullion, bar, mullion. So if you just come back, you can imagine this with a mullion there, a mullion there, a mullion there, and then in between them, vertical timber bars. So this is an original, very early window. And there's two of them. There's one there, there's one there. They are original. And so there's bits of original timber as well. We've got um, this uprighted knot. This is an insert because we've got no molding on it. Uh, the timber up there is original, you can see the vertical comes off, it's all got the original um, mortise and tenon and so on and so forth. So what we're doing here is just picking up what are the original timbers uh, and what are new. And clearly the brickwork is not original. This, this was um, put in much later. So we got brick on the front and back uh, and the brick is too heavy for the frame. <clears throat> if you look you'll see that the frame is moving out. These, these brick panels are rotating out. That one up there, I'll zoom in on it, you can see um, that is rotating outwards, it's moving. How severe is the movement and how rapidly is it happening? I don't know. Um, I suspect it's probably not that bad actually. I don't like them. If it's me, I would be arguing with conservation that they come out and they get replaced with uh, lightweight infills which will keep the building going for a lot longer. Um, this does have a beautiful, in that room, I'll, I'll do a little quick video of it, uh, very ornate 17th century plaster ceiling, which is lovely. Now then, back in the 1930s, this lot was very different. Uh, this was thatched. Uh, the, um, what you're looking at now was timber framed, but it certainly didn't look like this. This section wasn't here, the porch wasn't there at all. It came out and then it had a little single story thatched thing on the end. Uh, you can see the, the brick stack there and there was just a little out shot from the, the stack. Um, 1930s, the whole lot was, was basically pulled apart and rebuilt. Um, <clears throat> and this is all the rebuilding that was done. And they introduced at the time a load of inherent problems, uh, not the least of which is these stupid things here and the entire building right around uh, you can see that there is an inherent problem with this because water runs down the wall and it hits this now it's there's no sill beam there's literally just bits of wood balanced on top of a stone wall this all this wall is new and if you look at it you can see you know you've got a a 1930s supposedly damp course, not that they need it anyway, but they stuck one in <coughs> and it's causing humongous problems. I'll show you the timber frame as well, but this is, because it is cement, it is trapping water and you get the the usual story where where there is no cement down here, the brickwork, the stonework is in good condition and the further up you go, the worse it gets because the cement on top is trapping moisture into the wall. And here we've got timber literally just sitting on the cement. All the timber is deteriorating. Uh, wherever it's anywhere near this blasted cement, it's falling apart. And you can see this, this silly uh, stonework plinth has been done with cement. And it's, it's crazy. I mean, everything is rotting. <clears throat> so what we have to do I think in the short term you get rid of this cement you can see over the top how it's jacking up it's falling apart there it's breaking up it's even breaking the stone this is all 1930s stuff there's nothing really historic about it uh, these the um, dormer window things they're all 1930s as is all of this brickwork uh, stonework and and, and uh, infill panels uh, and you can see the damage that's going on right the way along by having cement. So our first job here, look at this, what a mess. 
So our first job is to have a look at getting rid of the cement uh, and try to get this lot breathing again. So at least when rain hits the walls here, uh, it's it's not jacking the top of the, the, the wall off. What are we going to do about the timber frame? Well, this is all timber. It's oak, it's rotting, <clears throat> and it's got cement infills. The reason the oak is not rotting terribly badly is because it's got nothing on it. There is no paint. Uh, so it's, it's all open and it's not trapping um, the, the, the oak and, and, and rotting it too much. It's set where the cement is at the bottom and you can see the base of these uprights look. Um, if I try and just, just zoom in on that one you'll see uh, there's cement wrapped around it and it's rotting. So <clears throat> wherever there is cement it's a problem. If you look up there you can see again cement and rot. I think this is going to be a longer term project to remove all of these panels and replace them with lightweight infills. It's a pastiche, it's 1930s, it's an interpretation of what they think it might have been and it's dreadful and it's grade 2 listed and probably should never have been flipping listed but uh, I'll show you inside because there is a little bit of evidence of the fact that there's, there's some ancient stuff in here. <clears throat> um, but it's how you make a building into something that it's not. Um, let's just have a look. This is all 1930s, so this staircase is inserted into historic fabric and there is absolutely nothing historically interesting about it. Um, we've got some beautiful fireplaces. This I think is part of the original. This is probably one of the gable walls of the original hall. Um, and we get in here and we've got a really lovely ancient feature. And this is, I think, probably the most significant part about it. This is 17th century moulded ceiling. Um, <clears throat> and you've got these cool, really cool bunches of grapes and things. Still there. Um, and you can see the, the detail of the, 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 the grapes. Um, <clears throat> we might have to try and get, the, get some of the paint off this and uh, expose the detail. Uh, there's a bit of a trick, a friend of mine in English Heritage um, taught me and that is you mix up some Tesco porridge and get a really thick sloppy porridge mix um, and then you just plant it all over and leave it for a couple of days and then peel it off and it brings all the paint with it and it doesn't damage the plaster. So you've got another of these bunch of grapes here, they're kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> but what we're doing here, this is um, loosening from the lath above. There's a certain amount of movement here and a lot of bowing and detachment from the, uh, the timber work above, the, uh, the floor joists. Um, and we're just going to stabilise that by holding it using a casting plaster. So you take a, a, a floor beam, wrap some um, hessian stripping over it and then pour casting plaster on either side of it so the plaster sticks the hessian to the the lath and what's remaining of the ornamental plaster underneath and then that holds it in place. It's a good repair. It doesn't involve doing anything invasive down here. We can just hold all this together and keep it going. Um, so internally it's a fascinating house. It's got lots of history. A uh, certain amount of argument as to whether these chimneys are original or not, bearing in mind that everything else in the house is this horrendous pastiche of 1930s interpretation, art and craft type um, rebuild. And you, you just get a feel walking through the house that somewhere in here is this beautiful old building and you can see a, a corner of the original um, framework and that corner has been built onto with much more modern stuff. You've got modern things here, um, 
that's actually an old window look so we've got a a, um, a central mullion and a window uh, the frame here look um, cut off and then some sort of an old panel door stuck into it and you can see the the other side of the frame there um, the tie beam which socketed into there and came across here has just been cut off completely um, and of course that's allowing movement in the the whole house there's just a little bit of movement going on it's nothing excessive but it's 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 movement nonetheless um, and then this this is all complete rebuild this is all 1930s uh, art and craft pastiche and you can see that they've they've come in and, and uh, they've even molded the uh, the wind braces and this certainly wasn't something that was done in uh, in the 17th century um, this very typical you, you you cut a wall plate so you chop this wall plate cut it off and then um, because you cut the wall plate you allow the wall to bend outwards so there's there's bowing and bending of this entire structure here which is why you've got a lot of cracking in the plaster there's movement um, to put these things in um, and then there's an added section on the end here and you can see it's uh, uh, this is all built out of reclaimed timber and it, it leaks like a sieve it's got holes everywhere um, and we're going to to keep this on the go we're just going to put a load of oakum um, in the in the holes and uh, and just stop the water getting in and then we'll have a think about what we're going to do with the building going on um, <clears throat> you can see there's a bit of movement there this is this is bowing out uh, and there's definitely movement um, on this side of it uh, we got another member of the the uh, the heritage house crew here this is Scott who does uh, a lot of the surveys down in the southeast so if you get a survey done uh, on the southeast end of the uh, the London blob you're likely to get Scott turn up <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah and more movement there it's, it's not excessive it's it's fine and we've got this this super duper um, art and craft style mess of just doors and things for the, an interpretation of what somebody thought an old house should be um, and you can see here they've actually used um, laugh uh, it's pretty modern laugh this is the 30s stuff um, with their 1930s stonework, the original timber frame would have gone down to the ground. Um, there's been a leak here, which is why it's all exposed. Uh, are these original fireplaces? We don't know. Um, it would be nice to think so. I think there is one original one, um, this one. And there's some interesting stuff here. I mean, even this room, I think, is a pastiche, but this, this fireplace does look original. And it's got, um, if you have a look at it, you can see there's, there's really old um, paint on it. This is a, an old lime paint, um, or maybe an oil paint, I don't know. I'm not good enough at paint to know. Uh, it's a little bit hard for, for lime. It might be a, an oil-based paint. Um, <clears throat> but interesting, if this is 17th century, the problem is the beams aren't. Um, these chamfers on them are much later I'd say these are, are heading up towards uh, Georgian and you may not be able to see it somebody's gone and um, coated these beams uh, but if you look at the marking on the beams you'll see that their they're marks were quite wide lath and I think this was laughed over in Georgian times and I think most of these ceilings were covered I think these are Georgian beams and I think there was a Georgian reworking of the house I found one original beam <clears throat> this is one of the original big bits downstairs and I was just wandering around in here um, came into the, 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 the room down here looked at yet another lovely old fireplace and then above it what you do and you start to see here you can see a much older the chamfer here is much wider this is much older 
and I think this might be a fragment of the original house. Um, it's certainly probably not in the place it was, was originally put. You can see there's a huge cutout here, and I think this is probably where it sat on a, a, uh, a girding beam or something within the house, or maybe on top of um, stonework for a chimney, but we just don't know. I mean, the place has been messed around with so much. Certainly that's an old fireplace, I don't think that has been changed in the 1930s. I think that goes back a long way. So I think you can say it's probably a, at least Georgian, uh, if not pre-Georgian. So heading back to when the house was built. So this may well be part of the, the original structure, the fireplace. Um, and that is probably one of the early beams. This is, I would say, one of the originals. Um, but we can't really find much else that sort of talks about the original fabric. It's just not there, we can't find anything. So lots of interpretation, lots of, what we might do is try and actually log some of the timber uh, and have a look at the, what we think is original and try and build up a little picture, three dimensional picture of just what is left uh, of the original house. Not a lot, I think most of it's been picked up and, and, and moved. Um, loads of pieces of timber here but I think they're all moved out of their original position so there you go um, what are we going to do we're going to come up with a um, a plan that will involve initially just conserving it trying to keep it going uh, and then we'll look at what we're going to do long term to to um, to keep the police going in the in, in in the longer term so spend a bit of money now but not very much and then later we'll spend a wee bit more and I think that'll involve doing all these infill panels um, <clears throat> so we've got a, a uh, local carpenter who's uh, he's got a bit of the, the jack of all trades I think yeah. actually building furniture at the moment oh. um, but he's um, really enjoying working with oakum plugging up the gaps and putting lime mortar into the holes so we're going to do a bit of hot lime work uh, a little bit of oakum caulking a bit of this and a bit of that just keep it going um, and then we'll have a look at what what gets done long term with this part um, personally I think you could demolish all of this and have this lovely glazed garden extension here so you can see into the garden and it would be really nice Anyway, I think that's about it. That gives you a, a, a background to an interesting old house. Um, development of the house over the years and um, just how it's important not to get taken in by appearance because you think that this is all very old and indeed a lot of the locals think it's very old, but it's not. This is all 1930s. It's a bodged up, bodged mess of what was originally a very historic building. Um, but you see here, look, you know, this is a bit of stonework, and here you can see metal lath and uh, metal pipes and things. So there's nothing old about what you're seeing here. Yeah, that's covering up one of the beams. Oh, it's covering up the beam, is it? That mesh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is too. Yeah, yeah, there's the timber behind it. The yeah, ring. yeah, yeah. There you go. So, yeah, what a mess. But it is what it is. Um, so it's really kind of cool. I don't know what we've done with this beam. The beam seems to have a sort of a... It goes up in the middle and down at the sides. And uh, yeah, it did have verticals. It had a big vertical here, but I think it's just reused timber. Come from somewhere else. Anyway, folks, so that's it. We'll um, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll update with a um, um, a continuing story on this. It's going to be a quite a long-term job for the owner. Um, she was going to spend quite a bit of money with um, building companies, but I actually don't think she needs to. I think she's got just the man here, and I think he's yeah. going to be able to mm -hmm. just do little bits and pieces. Um, and even the infill panels, sorting the infill panels outside, I think that's easy enough, he can do it himself, it's not a problem. Uh, don't need to spend massive amounts of money on this. It'll work quite happily, little dribs and drabs. Um, and I think it'll be a really nice place when it's done. So there you go.